Hey guys, this is Dyfly Fish. Just want to show you a test. I have 39% phosphoric acid here, or 38% phosphoric acid. And I'm going to place it on the magnesium that's been oxide treated with the graphite and without. Now normally this material on teeth will etch it within 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a small dollop here, small dollop here, 1 1,000 to 10. Okay. So we're going to see how this looks. So about 10 seconds have gone by. I'll rinse this off and we're going to check to see what it looks like. Here we go. Okay guys, after 10 seconds, um, or so thereabouts, you can see the phosphoric acid etched the graphite off of the, um, sorry about that, etched the, the graphite off the oxide layer. You can just barely make out that little circle there and it did not eat through the oxide layer. So after 10 seconds exposure of you know 38 percent phosphoric acid the oxide layer is pretty tough so for what it's worth um, I do believe that the only way that we're going to have a cell that we can make with magnesium is if we treat it this way without having pure galvanic action and I've made a cell and I'm disassembling a lot of my cells just to see what the galvanic action is it's really important that you know the metal be very very clean because you can even see here those little pits is anywhere there might have been a residual bit of zinc unless that's been uh, taken down to the bare metal when you're doing the electrolysis the oxide layer is not perfect so again this is just a matter of trial and error but suffice to say the oxide layer does appear to be pretty tough and it did not eat through it with 38 percent phosphoric so for what it's worth um, I put a sample like this on last night and if you leave it on for an hour it definitely can eat through it but at 10 seconds exposure not so much so again the efficacy of this remains to be seen for the long haul as well as you know the integrity of this material and how it's applied is I believe critical for the longevity of the cell have a great night Hey YouTube, this is Dive Life Fish. Just want to show you, I'm going to show you a confirmation of the piezoelectric effect. This is a carbon um, graphite, carbon graphite electrode that I made and I subjected it to a blowtorch about a week ago or so. In any event, this is what it's showing in as far as its microvoltage, so about 259. I'm just going to show you by using a force here, you're going to see an increase in voltage. I'll see if I can move my camera so it's easier to see. Okay, I'll try to get this focused for you. Okay, so here I'm going to be applying a force. You can see it go up 263, 264, 265, and then back down. Okay. Okay. So it takes a bit of time for it to relax. I'll try to get this. Over here, I'm, folk, I'm filming this with one hand, so again, 257, 58 right there, and I'll start pressing. Oops, sorry about that. Try this again. Start pressing, 266, 269, relaxes. Okay, in part of stress, goes up, goes down. Interesting stuff. So. transient but drops back down after equilibrating so so for what it's worth I'm going to try some tapping here see if we see any difference with the just impact so you can see here the, the voltage is definitely Going up with it. Let it sit. And it'll come back down. I just pounded the heck out of it, but interesting. It's taking a lot longer for it to dissipate than what I would have anticipated. So it's an interesting phenomenon. And again, this is a carbon carbon electrode, so it's something that. Um, can't argue that it's coming from 
differential materials, but again, it takes a little bit longer to relax than what I would have anticipated, and I'm not quite sure why that would be the case. But again, we can do you know just a simple pressure test again. Okay, we're starting at 266, 267. I'm going to push like heck now. See, jump up 275, 276. Let go. See, rebound transient in the opposite direction. Then she goes back down. Start tapping again. Fascinating. So, in any event, that polycrystalline mix um, that I made that has somewhat of like a silly putty consistency when it's still warm is definitively piezoelectric, or piezoelectric, I should say, uh, when it is dry. And again, what I can do now is I'll simply disassemble the cell to show you <clears throat> that it's been dry as a bone. Take it apart. One second here. Let me see if I can unscrew this. Sorry about that. Let me just cut it open. That'll be easiest. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm disassembling this thing with one hand, so... One more time. There we go. So in any event, this is the dry material here. Dry as a bone, so, you know, definitely... Um, Here's the material itself in its dried state. Definitely is dry. So for what it's worth, this material does act piezoelectrically. And even with carbon-carbon electrodes, it does seem to function. Again, that's the material, carbon-carbon, showing about 250 millivolts. Um, which is small, obviously, but nonetheless, to me, it's interesting that if you have two identical graphite electrodes, this one here is a 2B electrode, graphite 2B, this is a artistic grade graphite, and the other one here is also A 2B electrode. So 250 millivolts with identical with identical uh, electrodes. So for what it's worth, the material is piezoelectric. I'm still not 100% convinced that there isn't, you know, an initial galvanic reaction with these cells. But upon latency and once they dry and the material becomes dry and brittle. Um, it's definitely piezoelectric. So for what it's worth, I thought you might find this destructive test interesting. And I'm going to be continuing other destructive tests with my cells to determine the extent and the duration of magnesium consumption, if any. Um, the last inside-out cell that I t tested and that I manufactured, I did not utilize the polarized extended form to form the oxide layer on the magnesium. So I'm very inter interested to see if we see a lot of magnesium deterioration in that cell. It's been running for the last you know, couple of weeks nonstop. Um, I've been adding a couple of drops of water every 60 hours or so. But in any event, more work needs to be done. So I thought you might find the graphite-graphite piezoelectric effect um, interesting. And more test cells 